a splash of Phoebe, two drops of Prue, the hair of Piper, a tantalizing brew. The Women of Charmed, coming up next. Take three pretty young actresses. I think between the three of us, we have 50 years on television. Add a touch of Aaron spelling magic. We send to you this burning sun. And a dose of good luck. I go into every project not having high expectations of how it's going to perform. That way I'm not let down. And you have the perfect potion for TV rating success. It's cute girls kicking butt. <laughs> it's charm. The WB's enchanting TV series starring Shannon Doherty, Holly Marie Combs, and Alyssa Milano as three beautiful sisters who are also witches. We're not trying to send a huge message out there every single Thursday night. You know, we're not saying like, do this, do that. We're saying, look at us, we're total goofballs, and uh, we're having a blast. Great! Piper yeah. Phoebe Duck! We're in a time that's that's about girl power, you know, and, and this is definitely three very strong women that are fighting evil and, and trying to save people. Uh, the good news is the spell worked. I also think witchcraft is in, you know, just rising because I think the kids, you know, the traditional religions aren't really holding true for the younger generation. Ever since we realized we have all these teenage girls and little girls as fans, we've tried to somehow put a moral message in, a family message or a value message in with, you know, our witchcraft. How can it be good to be witches if all it does is get the people we love killed? <laughs> Magical women have long been a part of American pop culture. From the pointy-nosed villainess of the Wizard of Oz to the sexy young witches of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Charmed creator Connie Burge and story editor Robert Masello are trying to update the witchcraft myth for today's audience. It's not the weapon that makes him powerful, it's just it's part of what Libris has. I had only preconceived notions about what a witch was, and, and frankly I saw the pointed hat and the wart on the nose. So I bought an inordinate amount of books on the history of witchcraft, everything I could find. I mean, are you saying that she's holding it back purposely or that she knows where it is and if she's we... pointing them at it? I must say that Charmed is the only show that has a licensed, fully bonded demonologist, which is me, on staff. And as a result, because I've written books about demonology and the occult and witchcraft, I'm there to answer questions about how a demon would behave. Would he wear a hat to a party? What would he wear after Labor Day or before? I think uh, with the show we try and base it more on, on fantasy stuff and not the real Wiccan values because that tends to inflame a few people. We're either not technically correct enough or we're like too far away from the truth. So it's hard to kind of make everybody happy. The moment she's, Phoebe says, aha, she's taken by the demon, that leaves Prue and Piper. They have to scramble and they got to figure out which still Executive producer awesome. Brad Kern and the show's writers always keep one concept clearly in mind. Okay, but this is a show thing. about three sisters who happen to be witches, not three witches who happen to be sisters. And that chronology is important because it tells us what our focus is. It's about the sisters. In fact, the Hollywell sisters of Charm are actually based on the real life sisters of show creator Connie Burge. I have two older sisters and um, my older sister Laura is very strong, very driven, and so I attributed the characteristics that my sister Laura has to the character of Prue. Are you sure you're up for this? I'm sure. The middle sibling typically tends to be a real people pleaser and very funny, tends to deal with life with a lot of humor. That really applied to my sister Edie, and so I could see the character of, of Piper. When we went back to the 70s, we saw ourselves as kids, and now we'll be seeing ourselves walking around 10 years older. Oh, the vanquishing, think of the wear and tear. Phoebe was honestly the easiest. It just drew, drew from within. What's the matter? He didn't bleed, he's not bleeding, there's no blood, there's nothing. Alyssa, was just the greatest piece of luck 
she actually replaced another actor um, at the 11th hour, and so, you know, lucky. Yeah, I felt charmed. <laughs> And we shot the pilot with a different girl playing Phoebe, Lori Rom, who I will say is a great actress. And whatever her personal reasons were for not wanting to continue, I, I understand. It's really interesting because Alyssa and Lori are so completely different. And the show is completely different because of the dynamic that Alyssa brings into it. I was just jumping right in. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, the, the dynamic with the other girls, not knowing if the girl that I replaced was their best friend or, or not. And I knew that the two of them had been friends for a long time, so I was nervous about that. But that lasted all of six hours. We didn't gain any lead time when we had to reshoot parts of the pilot. And fortunately, uh, the WB and uh, Aaron was willing to, were really willing to reach in their wallets because it wasn't cheap to reshoot a lot of that stuff. The investment paid off. TV empresario Aaron Spelling and his partner E. Duke Vincent had another hit on their hands. But this show had the biggest premiere in the history of the Warner Brothers Television Network. Now again, how did that happen? Suddenly we're doing a show about three young good witches. I remember when uh, we were picked up after two episodes. By the way, it's never happened to me in my whole career. Two episodes on the air and they call you and pick you up for 22. Come on. And I called Alyssa and Shannon, got on the phone, and I said, we've been picked up. And they said, what? So we've been picked up for the whole year. And they started screaming, screaming. I think I psyched myself up going, God, we're going to have really bad ratings, and you know, we're on a tough night, and blah, 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 blah. I'm holding the damn phone, waiting, and they ran away to scream to the crew, we're picked up for the whole year, and I could hear their voices screaming. The crew started applauding and screaming. A great moment, really a great moment. Then the second season, when they moved us to Thursday night, I was like, oh, we're dead, we're killed, we're getting canceled. And Shannon let the CEO of the WB, Jamie Kellner, know her feelings firsthand. Shannon called me all upset when we first announced that we were going to move the show. And, and, you know, I, and I remember promising her that the show would do as well or better in the new time period. And, and so she said, well, I'm going to be watching. And I think right after we got our numbers on Thursday night, I called her. and. And so she admitted we were right. <laughs> I think that we kind of caught lightning in a bottle with the girls and their chemistry. I like to think that we maintained it with uh, good stories and good scripts and good production, but it starts out with the girls. Some have said Charmed reminds them of another female-driven spelling hit. You have three attractive women who are um, doing, doing good things every week. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've been told that this, this feels like Charlie's Angels with broomsticks. I can see the comparisons, especially when, you know, there's a Charlie's Angels shot of us, like, all three running down the street, and you just feel it. You're like, oh, here's the Charlie's Angels shot. We're three girls, and it's a spelling show, and we always have great hair and makeup and great clothes, so it's hard not to draw the comparisons, and it's, it was a great show, so it doesn't bother us that much. Buddy, what are we doing? We're getting a tight two. You help guys me can. help you. <laughs> it's pure entertainment, and we have fun doing what we're doing, and that translates to the audience. In the next hour, you'll watch the magic happen. Meet Shannon Doherty, <laughs> Alyssa Milano, Holly Marie Combs, and their hunky male co stars. And discover how the writers, producers, and production wizards help these lovely ladies bewitch America each week. So don't go away. This is Holly Marie Combs, and you're back with the women of Charmed. Why would you want to be anywhere else? <laughs> it takes months to produce an episode of Charmed, from story development through filming sure to post-production. And each show is yeah, unique, well. but one element remains the same, the women of Charmed. Let's get to know the actors who play the Hollywell sisters, starting with Holly Marie Combs. Don't make me kill you, buddy. <laughs> Holly started acting in commercials at the ripe old age of 10. She went on to appear in low-profile movies such as 1992's teen slasher flick, Dr. Giggles. But in 1993, a little woman-to-woman -woman kiss on the David E. Kelly series, Picket Fences, thrust Holly into the national spotlight and ignited her career. The sexuality between teenagers mm -hmm. is just like so um, shocking. 
Picket fences was more sitting around the table and talking, which is actually good. And I thought uh, all this action stuff would be a lot easier than it actually was. Katie! Holly's charmed beginnings involved an old friend. Shannon and I have been friends for about uh, seven years, and um, we had the same business manager who also represents Connie Burge, our writer, so it was kind of an in-house production. Our business manager is getting fees from all of us now. <laughs> the interesting thing is when my agent gave me the script, Holly had the script as well. And so when I went in to have my conversation with Aaron, I brought Holly with me. Aaron and I just sat there telling the network that Holly was perfect. I auditioned and I tested for the network and I went through all the gates and ran the gamut and they finally hired me. I tend to be on the dark and serious side and Holly's middle of the road, I would say. She can go comedic or go dark. Being around Alyssa, Holly's picked up a lot more comedy. Show creator Connie Burge was seduced by Holly's charm. Holly, who had such a wonderful resume with picket fences, brought just the perfect amount of humor and the kindness and the gentleness that I always thought Piper would have. My character is the middle sister. She's somewhat the peacemaker. She's always worried about something. She's very worrisome and um, a little bit neurotic. And she has the power to freeze time, which came out of her great ability to panic at special it. moments in time. Look, don't move. <laughs> Okay, um, this is going to hurt me a lot more than it's going to hurt you. Uh, Piper's very different than me. She's, uh, she's a lot funnier than I am naturally. <laughs> and she's a bit more high strung than me. It can be exhausting to play her every day for 12 hours. She can get exhausting. Every episode that is about Piper I, I always love. So like the, the uh, Wendigo episode where, where Piper turns into a werewolf. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous, but... For some reason, she pulled it off beautifully. I thought that that was a really good one. She's definitely developed her own fan following and, and is a huge, huge asset to the show. Derek! Shut up! Sasha! Do you tell your Derek department man to be quiet? I can hear him all the way up here. <laughs> it's just our AD staff. They're the ones that are supposed Excuse me? They're the ones that are supposed to keep things quiet. I hear his voice the loudest. Shush! <sighs> the atmosphere is crazy all the time. We usually, you know, what we do is fun stuff, so it's impossible not to have fun with it. I still hear you! Shush! Don't make me come down there. Cool. <laughs> we have, uh, we have <laughs> just silly things. We have grape frights. So I think it was Holly picked up a bunch of these uh, fake rubber grapes and just started throwing them at the crew. Friday night grape fight that I, I think I started. Or was it somebody else? And all of a sudden, you know, everybody's being bombarded by these grapes. No, it was me. <laughs> when she's not cracking up her co-workers, Holly's in character breaking hearts. Dan! Hi. I With Holly. She has such a, again, a gentle quality to her, so it's allowed us to explore a uh, love triangle with her very successfully because we are really able to feel her pain and her struggle. Holly's something. She's like the girl that, you know, she's like your girlfriend. She could be your girlfriend on any given moment. You just want to show her to mom. Mom, this is the, the one. If Holly had the power to cast a spell in real life, she, she knows exactly good. which poor soul she'd target. I'd cast a spell on that AD down there to be quiet. He is so loud. He has the biggest voice. He's the one that calls rolling and quiet on the set. It's him making noise. Quiet, please. Coming up next. <laughs> All right, let's add a single to this line, please. <laughs> <Holly>. The enchanting <laughs> antics of Alyssa Milano. Hi, I'm Alyssa Milano, and you're hanging with the women of Charmed. And if you're good and you stay right there, maybe we'll cast a spell on you. Okay, we got him. You there? Okay. Each of the Hollowell sisters has a special power all her own. 
Alyssa Milano's character, Phoebe, has the spooky ability to see into the future. Ah! I saw my future. I was being executed. But off screen, Alyssa's very different from her character. Oh God, I hope she doesn't kill me. My first memory of Alyssa, um, I think we were 12. And there were like these sort of young kid Hollywood parties. And Alyssa was in the middle of the dance floor. And Shannon's not the only one who remembers Alyssa's past. Most of us watched her grow up on television. Oh, who's the boss? Oh God, she doesn't know this. <laughs> I used to watch Who's the Boss religiously as a child. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I did. I watched it. I loved it. Every week I was there. I think that the great thing about Who's the Boss is it was obvious when that character needed to change because I was growing up. Um, which, you know, to go through puberty in front of all of America. <laughs> you know, I came in with a little training bra one week and the next week I looked at the script and it said Sam's first bra. I was like, there's something very wrong with this. <laughs> After a successful eight-year run on Who's the Boss came to an end, Alyssa soon caught the eye of Aaron Spelling. Everybody talks about Alyssa's beauty and talks about her great figure and everything. I saw this. I saw eyes that were windows and not mirrors. When we were looking for somebody from Melrose Place to bring in a young, exciting person, uh, there was nobody else we thought of. Well, it's crazy. Oops. That's good. When Charmed lost its first Phoebe and desperately needed to cast a replacement, Spelling picked up the phone and made a wish. I was in Hawaii doing an episode of Fantasy Island, and I got a phone call where he, you know, I picked up the phone and I heard his assistant say, Mr. Spelling is on the line for you, which is always a frightening phone call because you feel like you're being sent to the principal's office. <laughs> it's like, hi, Mr. Spelling. I talked and I talked. and. Then I kept pausing, waiting for a question, so I would talk some more. You could tell how passionate he was about the show and how much he believed in it. Tell you the truth, I don't know what the hell I said. So I was, you know, on the phone with him, sort of like, you know, <laughs> just loving hearing this sweet man talk about witches and warlocks. So he sent me the original pilot and, and the script, and that was it. I started work. Like five days later, she was very nervous. Her stomach was all upset. She had butterflies. She was very nervous and very quiet. And she was so sweet immediately. I kept score in case you're wondering. According to the cast, Alyssa didn't stay quiet for long. Yeah, we have to go again because I didn't, I, I screwed up. She makes these faces, and it's just the way that something will come out that she'll say. It doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make me like it anymore. It doesn't. Doesn't All that. It, yeah, All of that. Doesn't change how you feel. Doesn't either. change how I feel either. She's just a naturally funny girl. She harasses people and it's funny. Speeding. Oh, she's fun, man. You know, she's an, Ital an Italian girl. You know, like you know. So I, I know about her. Oh, I don't think so. Actually, Phoebe's a lot like I am in the sense that she finds humor in every situation. I think she represents that. You know, 22, 23 year old who is driven but doesn't know by what, <laughs> you know? And I think that the witchcraft sort of gave her a purpose. But Phoebe's power to see into the future isn't one she's mastered. Sorry, Phoebes. She can control it sometimes. <laughs> when she's focused, she can, you know, get a premonition when she calls one to her. Um, but most of the time she can't, which is part of her frustration. <laughs> Phoebe doesn't think things through with any area of her life as much as her sisters do. So, especially the witchcraft, because that's exciting and sort of unknown to her. Like most witches in Hollywood, Phoebes can't cast a spell without wearing the latest fashions. And that's just fine with Alyssa. My wardrobe is awesome. The only problem I have with it is that when I go out shopping now, I can't find anything to wear because Phoebe gets all the cool stuff. <laughs> And Alyssa doesn't. <laughs> and longtime spelling costume designer Eilish loves dressing Alyssa Milano. This little skirt is Alyssa. This is her little top. She wore this to a nightclub. A lot of guys followed her home. When we go back to the 20s, I, I, I'm evil Phoebe. I wore a, a, a black wave wig, you know, very period. Um, we did very evil sort of makeup. This was the dress 
And then this was the cape that she uh, makes her big entrance in. She got into the character as far as the makeup and the way she walked, the way she talked. It definitely makes it easier when you look in the mirror and you're like, whoa, that's not me. Alyssa may get lost in her character from time to time, but here in the present, she's among friends. I feel that we're incredibly lucky that the three of us found each other. We all have horses, so we all have things that are in common. Holly and I keep our horses at the same ranch, so we go riding all the time together, and we're very similar. And um, very close, we're blessed in that way. It's, it's like a big slumber party every day. We giggle a lot. <laughs> Coming up next. It's a trap, so just stay away, don't look for me. Get personal with Shannon Doherty. We didn't have to get half naked, we just had to make out. Hi, I'm Shannon Doherty, and you're watching The Women Uncharmed. And um, I'm told that the show takes a lot of work and a little bit of magic. Line up and shoot, quiet guys. Line up and shoot, quiet please. Shannon Doherty portrays the eldest of the three charmed sisters, Prue Hollowell. I can move things with my mind. <laughs> and then I figured out how to levitate people. Prue is starting to branch out and take some chances and experiment. Experiment with love, experiment with a career. She's loosening up, which, thank God, is, it's like, oh God, you're just, you know, she's always getting on to Phoebe for casting a spell, and it, it's, it's draining to play, actually. Phoebe, I'm going to help him. Think about this, how well do you really know him? Demanding work doesn't phase this acting veteran. Shannon Doherty began her career in 1982, starring as Jenny Wilder on Michael Landon's Little House, A New Beginning. I was 10 years old. It was a lot of fun. I loved Michael Landon. Next, she did the TV series Our House and the critically hailed cult film Heathers. But it was Aaron Spelling's Beverly Hills 90210 that made Shannon a star, though she left the hit series to make more films. And then my agent called me and said, you know, there's a TV show called Charmed. Why don't you read the script? I was like, all right. And then he told me it was Aaron Spelling. And I was like, OK. Combination is kind of interesting. Me, Aaron, back together again, Charmed. You know, I walked into his office, and he grabbed me and hugged me and said, welcome back, kiddo. Shannon certainly dove head first into the witchy role of Prue Hollywell. I researched it until people started running away from me at bookstores because they thought that I was some scary, like, freak that was God only knows what I was going to do to them all. And, and that stuff really scares me. I mean, there was like a spell in a book about um, how to bed down with Satan and have his child. And that freaks me out, obviously. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I, I may have hooked up with a couple of Satans in my life, but I don't really want to repeat that. <laughs> Fortunately, in this episode, Shannon doesn't have to snuggle up with Satan, but rather with hunky guest star Antonio Sabato Jr. It wasn't really a love scene. We sort of ended it with a kiss, and then it cuts to us the next morning, and I'm wearing his boxer shorts. So yeah. let the audience, you know, come up with whatever happened on their own. And by the way, where were the condoms in the abandoned house? He didn't bring them because he just got out of jail. So it's all a little on the either. irresponsible side. So I, I tend to think that Prue did not sleep with him. <laughs> well, we'll see. I, I, you know, I probably agree with her, but we'll see what the, what the public thinks. While Antonio still feels shy during his love scenes, Shannon takes them in stride. Well, we didn't have to get half naked. We just had to make out. Yeah. So that was easy. But it's still uncomfortable. You know, people walking around and stuff. You know. I'm used well, to you it. You try to make fun of it. You know, try to make jokes and. Stuff like that. He's anyway. uncomfortable. I'm not. Oh, yeah. She's, <laughs> I she's okay care with that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> but, you know, we I kiss crew time. guys all the time. Like, what do I care? You she know? knows the whole crew. Me, I'm just new at this. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. And, end of scene. <laughs> There's times when I come to work and I want to bitch because I want to be with my horses or something's happening, my dog needs to go to the vet or whatever it is, and I'm like, oh my God, I, you know, there's so much stuff at home that I need to take care of, but it's up to you to go in every single day and find something challenging and rewarding and inspiring about your job. Okay. She's got a little bit of a photographic memory, which is really annoying, because she can come in that morning and learn her lines in rehearsal and know them immediately. 
she has but moments where she can pull out through. tears like it's because nothing. You have got to figure out what your problem is, otherwise we're all dead. And yeah, that's right, Phoebe, it's my responsibility, isn't it? The oldest sister always Shannon knows her acting things. ability isn't the only reason viewers tune in. I have some really great clothes. I think Eilish does such a good job and she makes every outfit interesting. I think the most casual thing where I don't have to worry about whether my stomach is sucked in or not is, is really nice. We did a show with Shannon and she was playing a character as Miss Hellfire. And that was a lot of fun to do and we had to make her almost tr little trashy. I had these leather pants on her that I had made and they were completely opened up the side and then she wore this little bra with it. I think Hellfire is probably one of my favorites because the tone of the show changed and it became more of what I had always wanted the show to be. The lighting got a lot darker and shadows cutting in and out. Um, my style of, of a show. It may be that delicate balance between light and dark that makes Shannon Doherty so fascinating. Her response to this lighthearted question reveals a beguiling woman of contrasts. If you could cast a spell on anybody, who would you cast it on? <laughs> oh boy, I should really give the diplomatic answer for this one. Um, <clears throat> I probably would not. There's, there's honestly, it's the cheesiest, corniest answer in the world, which is why I hate saying it, but it's 100% true. And my dad has been struggling with his health um, for a really long time. And I would probably cast a spell just to heal him completely and make sure that he was, was healthy and would live a very long time. And then if I had like one petty one, it would be, probably be something vicious and mean. <laughs> cast a spell on like some guy that I can't stand. It would be some really ridiculous, vindictive girly spell. <laughs> when we return. I love playing a bad guy. The women of Charm wouldn't have much fun without the sexy guys of Charm. I think Dan feels like he's going somewhere with her, and then the, bam, it's a slap in the face. They're up next. Hi, I'm Brian Krause, uh, one of the guys of Charmed, and you're back here watching the beautiful women of Charm, just like I do every day. Let me see. Uh... The women of Charmed wouldn't be as sexy as they are if they didn't have the men of Charmed to be sexy with. It's a very hard job to have to work with those guys, to have to look at their faces every day. <laughs> Actor Brian Krause stars as Leo, a guardian angel type character known as a white lighter. Last season I started Handyman uh, about halfway through uh, the audience found out I had powers. I have powers to heal. I can disappear, reappear. I hate when he does that. I was like, oh no, anybody who has powers dies. And, you know, so I came in the day of, I'm supposed to do this magic thing. And, you know, I had no idea if I was a good guy or bad guy. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> good guy, bad guy. They're like, good guy, good guy. And I was like, Whew. Brian Krause is just the consummate professional. Always knows his dialogue and he's sort of got the worst of it, because he's the white lighter, he has to explain the demons of the week. Story editor Robert Masello tries to make sense of all these magical men. The white lighters are a kind of angelic creatures, and in this case, Leo is the white lighter who has been assigned to the three charmed sisters, and his job is to kind of watch over them and help them, but at the same time, he is, as the stories have developed, he's formed a, an emotional and romantic attachment to the character of Piper, so it's been very difficult for him to decide whether to remain on the higher plane as a white lighter. What had happened is I saved her uh, when I wasn't supposed to, and they clip my wings, the, the elders uh, clip my wings, and I'm like on suspension. We were dating last year, and then she found out I'm a white lighter, and it made it kind of difficult to kind of be together and have a normal relationship, so we kind of broke it off, uh, and she met Dan, uh, the neighbor, and. They started dating. Actor Greg Vaughn portrays Leo's rival, next door neighbor Dan Gordon. He definitely knows he's fighting to win Holly, to win Piper, I should say, to, uh, to win her heart, you know, and uh, with somebody in my way, it's just constantly a, a challenge. I mean, I think Dan feels like he's going somewhere with her, and then the, bam, 
it's a slap in the face. Something else comes up and it's like, Leo's back in the picture. Damn. Leo. <clears throat> Obviously, Leo is the favorite because he's been around longer and um, I don't know what's gonna happen with my love triangle. I don't know about any of the witchcraft. I don't know about anything. Piper? <laughs> So I'm kind of left in the dark in certain areas, but well, you know, we uh, each week is a different week, and, and and it just makes this constant roller coaster ride of where, where we're gonna go. Shannon Doherty's character Prue also has a new love interest, played by recurring guest star Antonio Sobato Jr. Though the relationship seems doomed from the start. There's a lot about me you don't know. A few things that you need to learn about me too. <laughs> I'm a bad guy turned good guy, you know, and I need her help. It's charmed. <laughs> they can't be bad for too long. <laughs> no, just a little bad. After breaking out of jail and kidnapping Prue to help him fight demons, Antonio's character might end up back in the slammer indefinitely. Well, it's the whole Patty Hearst syndrome, right? You're like kidnapped and all of a sudden you fall in love with your, your abductor. That's the only way to hang out with Shannon anyway, to kidnap her. She's so busy, you know, it's the only way. <laughs> I told you I'm not getting my sisters involved. Fine. What's most important to me is that they believe the work and, you know, and in this show, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard because, you know, you're talking about witches and stuff. We're witches. We, we have powers. Also struggling to come to terms with the witchcraft is police inspector Daryl Morris, played by actor Dorian Gregory. He just found out that the, these women are witches and it's just like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's slowly, slowly, slowly starting to discover this world that he never even knew existed. Someone tried to kill us. See who it was? She's in there. She. He's trying to keep things together, you know? He's trying to, to, to keep his job under control. He's trying to keep his life under his control. And he's trying to keep his sanity under control. And that's why you're standing here alive and she's in here riddled with bullets. Dorian's like hysterical. Dorian is, uh, Dorian's probably got the loudest laugh of anybody I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> What's the matter? He didn't bleed. He's not bleeding. There's no blood. There's no Greg and I are really, really close. We're good yeah, friends. Yeah. Of course he's not bleeding. He's frozen. His blood is frozen. A friend of mine actually had a, uh, a birthday party and she had a prom theme. And I had never been to the prom, so I asked Greg to be my prom date and he brought me a corsage. <laughs> Which is really adorable. If I could have one of the girls cast this spell, I don't know, that's pretty tough. <laughs> I mean, uh, saved by the bell. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I just feel like I've already, they've already cast this spell before I even knew it. And now I'm here. When we return, the women of charm show us the magic behind their magic. There's a large snake with a demon's head on top of it, and he's swirling towards you and duck and scream. Welcome back to the Women of Charmed. Powers, spells, witches, and demons. Charmed isn't your ordinary primetime television show. Each episode of Charmed is filled with special effects, stunts, and props that help make those Hollywell sisters the witches they are. Director Jim Cotner has seen Charmed grow into a supernatural phenomenon. People love to be dazzled with special effects. I think the relationship with the three sisters works really well, and I think people respond to that. The fact that they're all really good looking helps. Executive producer Brad Kern oversees the magic behind the magic. Oftentimes they're acting against a green screen and we're going to put in the demon later or the special effect and they have to somehow imagine um, what we're going to be doing. Sounds easy, but it's not. Do you have to have such a sense of imagination and stamina to be able to look at a green screen and picture the scariest, biggest demon we've ever come up against a lot, almost every week? Uh, Chris, do left and right your full range of movement for your head. 
You're reacting to absolutely nothing, and that's the bad part because I'm a very self-conscious person by nature. So I look around and I see crew members like watching me act like an idiot, and uh, I get very like uptight and self-conscious. First AD Tim Longsdale has had his share of long days as well. The last episode, we worked with a lot of animals. We were in uh, shooting in the P3, which is the club in the show. At one point, the girls cast a spell, and all of the extras become animals. So we had the difficulties of not only dealing with animals on the set, but then doing it on green screen. With each new show, the Hollywell girls discover new spells and new demons. We're always constantly striving to come up with a demon that looks different or has different powers than the last episode. Turning into a hairy monster convincingly, which is a lot harder than it sounds, without making it look stupid or campy and make it seem scary and not laughable. And if that's not frightening enough, in one charmed episode, Shannon was transformed into a man. All you have to do is visualize a man that you admire and then emulate him. You know, the walk will follow. A man that I admire. Mm -hmm. All right, I got that. Okay. The man you admire is Richard Simmons. <coughs> Show props are another important feature in making Charmed a reality. These props don't just materialize with a twinkle of the nose. They're created by a top-notch prop department, including assistant prop master Christy McGeechy. My most loved and uh, my most hated prop is right here, this Book of Shadows. The symbol here, which is the triqueta, meaning the three sisters, and they're the charmed ones. It's actually the spell book of all the witches and family members before them. These are actually demons. This is one of our new pages that we just had made. Um, and what we did to produce this is we took photographs of some of our crew members and producers along with our, our um, cast and they were able to distort some of the features, and we got some great renderings we were pretty happy about. This is Betty Reardon, our consulting producer. No, 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 no. This is our Ouija board. This is what our girls used to actually find our Book of Shadows in the attic, which was how they found out that they were witches. We'll do a little test right now. Visual effects supervisor Steve Labed works his wizardry bringing objects to life for each show, like this fireball. Uh, we'll go ahead and stage the shot and talk with the director and plan out exactly where we're gonna, how we're gonna shoot it. And then once we have those pieces, uh, then we go to stage later on, and we have special rigs that we've built to uh, give us some very stylized looking fire, flames, and fireballs. Crew's telekinetic powers may seem effortless on screen, but it's the result of painstaking labor from stunt coordinator Noon Arsadi and his team of dedicated professionals. We have a stunt coming up here where we're going to actually launch a person who's supposed to be telekinetically moved uh, through a window. I would not want to be pulled through and thrown into a wall, you know, and everything then falling face forward. I just, I think I got a better job. The girls actually are extremely game for, uh, you'd be surprised, I'm like, I bite my nails daily. And yet, you know, we do have some stunt girls that are extremely qualified and do some of the more hellacious stuff. The final step for most special effects is done at Encore Video, a post-production facility. Here, high tech seamlessly merges special effects with filmed footage, making witchcraft a reality. Associate producer Peter Chomsky and special effects artist Christian Budman ensure that each scene possesses just the right amount of detail and intensity. Christian, with this plate of Prue, you know, we're going to be putting in the uh, the freeze power that we're giving her when she goes back to 1924. I've started building the composite, and I'll show you what I've got so far. Executive producer Brad Kern is involved in the development and fine-tuning of the show's effects. This is Astro Prue. This is Prue's new power from telekinetic. She has the ability to project herself into a different room she's actually literally in two different places at the same time i hope that they get fun with it like sort of what would have been great is in antonio's and i love scene is if she on accident like astral projected in the middle of like making love <laughs> and ended up somewhere else uh we'll let you figure that one out when we return none of us are willing to cut our paychecks down for him
Welcome back to the Women of Charm. Roll out. With another episode on the air, the producers and writers are already working on shows months down the production pipeline. When she and Prue and Piper show up in Act 3 to vanquish the villain, she has to draw out the villain. I hope we're doing the right thing. The Hollywell sisters will continue to master their craft, and viewers can also look forward to them growing as women. I'd like to see the sisters evolve and change and go through life changes like normal women do. We need to find some resolution with Piper's romantic struggles. Her heart has really been torn over two wonderful men. When you were sick, you called out his name, not mine. And I was right there with you. I don't know what's going to happen with my love triangle. I think she might get a mortal white lighter for a little bit. With Prue, she struggled creatively to sort of figure out what it is that she wants to do. I pushed for her to quit her job at Buckland's and to get into photography, just to do something that sort of explores her creative artistic side a little bit more. Alyssa's character is also in for some changes. Phoebe, are you okay? I saw my future. When the show first started, she was just out of college and she didn't really know what she wanted to do. And, and She's evolved now and gone back to college, so she's trying to figure it all out. Uh, of course, it's really the writers and producers who decide Phoebe's fate. So the final exam is something that she might have to miss by vanquishing this demon. And Antonio Sabato Jr.'s character may be gone. I'll never see you again, I promise. But he's certainly not forgotten. <laughs> I'd love to come back. You know, my character goes back to jail again, so we'll see. We'll see. Antonio's great to work with, so I don't okay. think any of us would mind. He might be commanding too high of a price. None of us are willing to cut our paychecks down for him. <laughs> well, he's coming back. There's a nasty side of Prue that uh, we like to explore. They have great chemistry on screen, so it was a natural to say, hey, you want to come back? Here are these words. Here are the rhyme. He sent to you this burning sign. Then our future selves will find in another place in time. We have a staff of writers and executive producers that have the same desire that the three of us girls have, which is to see the show just get better and better and better. And I don't think that we have necessarily found our voice yet, but we're close and we're on our way there. And as long as we all want to sort of like evolve and grow and make this show better, then, then we're going to end up doing it. And we'll keep watching as the charmed cast and crew continue flying high. Broomsticks and all, thanks for joining us. Cut. That was great. That was excellent. <laughs> I have like weird dreams that'll come true and, and little things. The most magical event is that I got a job here. <laughs> we can't encourage the superstition <laughs> rumors. My trailer moves around a lot. <laughs> there you go. I'm feeling a little tired. I can't cast any spells today. <laughs> can't protect you from any demons.